Welcome back. Today we review disposable vapes and their environmental impacts and how to best mitigate those issues. We review big pharma payments to New Zealand public health officials. And lastly, we go over some of the TGA submissions from the last Australian consultation. In Europe, as elsewhere, there have been calls from Public Health and the Anti-THR Brigade that disposable vapes need to be immediately removed from the market. Bad science and disinformation aside, there is one thing that we all need to consider, the recycling of disposable vapes to limit the impact on the environment. Vaping doesn't come without a some sort of plastic waste. Coils, pods, etc. all get thrown out when they're done, and while that isn't really ideal, imagine also adding a lithium battery to the mix. I'll be throwing these materials away. I mean, it really is madness. Okay. This also applies to pod vapes and any battery that is used for vaping. I can't believe how many there are. But... I know, this is about a week's worth of uh, vapes that we get in. How many disposable vapes are going to waste and how many are coming to you here? There's about a million vapes a week disposed of, but rather frustratingly, only about 30% of that million actually goes into the recycling chain. Disposable, it's a, you buy it once, there's no button, you just inhale and then throw it away when it's done. It's just more convenient, isn't it? If this was a torch and light came out of it, there's no way you'd throw this, right? You'd go, oh God, I better not do that. But this seems like very innocuous, so people just don't know. One suggestion that has already been implemented by some retailers in various countries is that the devices be recycled at the point of purchase. So if you have a vape pen battery, it's old or we want to get rid of it, bring it here to the greenhouse, we will recycle it. Is there an extra cost involved to the retailer? Probably so, but compared to profit, it's a small price to pay to be responsible to the environment and give the detractors one less thing to harp on about. The environmental impact that disposables have is pretty drastic. There's a simple solution to this environmental problem, which is to put a deposit, one or two pound deposit on every one of these sold. This would then be currency. No one's gonna throw this on the ground then. Maybe this will give the WHO an idea about reminding signatory countries to have refuse and recycling programs in their countries, not just for household and industrial rubbish, but for all the masks, rat tests, and gloves that they were promoting the use of during the pandemic. It is something to seriously think about. Talk to your retailer shop and see if something can be implemented if it's not already. We are all responsible for the environment. For seven years, Medicines New Zealand has promised that drug companies will disclose their gifts and payments to health professionals. Now, they finally have. It's not a complete number and probably not very representative, but it is a number and that is progress. The total in the first release of data is $456,418.95. Two leaders of the anti-vape organizations in Aotearoa, Asburn Respiratory Foundation of New Zealand, and the Royal New Zealand College of General Practitioners are listed as receiving funds from Big Pharma. Interestingly, the medical director of the Asthma and Respiratory Foundation of New Zealand received the most of all individuals on the list, in total a sum of $29,191.80. Coincidence? Serendipity? We know from studies that people who vape uh, have high incidences of cough, uh, sputum production, uh, wheeze and, and shortness of breath. What we don't want to see is a new generation of people addicted to vaping who will then end up with damaged lungs as a result. Which we reviewed almost 4,000 uh, studies uh, and then we published it back in uh, 2019 saying it's our opinion that these are not safe consumer products. Perhaps instead of promoting false narratives and disinformation around tobacco harm reduction, it would be best for both these organizations to focus on ending the tobacco scourge that continues to wreck families and communities in Aotearoa, New Zealand. The Therapeutic Goods Administration has released the submissions around the consultation on nicotine that closed in January. 
they, of course, originally promoted the support of their policies from health professionals and health associations who support their restrictive medicalized model. Including organizations like Asthma Australia and the Cancer Council Australia, who fully support the TGA proposals. Other submissions, for example, from an alleged doctor. As a medical practitioner, I am being asked to prescribe tobacco and vapes. I will not prescribe this in any form. Patients will expect me to prescribe these dangerous products. It is unethical for me to do so, therefore I refuse. Others have said, just get rid of it, or vaping is a death sentence. Other ridiculous comments included the AMA stating in their submission that e-liquids coming into Australia contain vitamin E acetate and diacetyl, which shows that they don't know what they are talking about. Parents Victoria, in their submission, claimed that in their casual survey, children as young as eight years old are vaping. Maybe Parents Victoria need to focus on parenting skills and parental responsibility if this is, in fact, the case. Then, of course, there's Johnson & Johnson. Their submission supports the pharmaceutical model, obviously, as they stand to gain millions in profit from such a system. On the other side, there were many comments from people who are very worried that the proposed regulations would drive them back to smoking. Comments such as removing the ability to access nicotine vaping products would have an adverse effect on my efforts to quit smoking. Another statement, tighter controls could lead to me and many others back to smoking and increase the cost burden to the health system. Experts say they're highly addictive, full of chemicals and more popular than ever with kids. They can also result in seizures, throat irritation and nausea, as well as damage to the lungs. More than half of the liquids tested contained nasty chemicals, including ingredients for pesticides and disinfectants. The Australian media are also jumping on the anti-THR bandwagon with anti-THR rhetoric and instead of journalistic integrity, are parroting the propaganda of the prohibitionists. Australian health authorities have said there's no chance we'll follow the UK's swap to stop policy, which sees the UK offer smokers millions of free vapes to replace cigarettes. I mean, I, have the UK missed the mark on this approach? I think it's fairly obvious. This is ridiculous. We need to be really tight about, um, about vaping. We need to stamp it out rather than what the UK is doing, which is basically saying go for your life. Well, we're seeing increasing evidence of the risk and harm that vaping does. Uh, both the government and the Therapeutic Goods Administration are looking very closely and so I think we can expect the rules to tighten here. Uh, I don't want to see years from now, and we're talking about a doctor shortage and a rural health crisis, uh, the young people of today presenting themselves to the hospitals in the future because they vape now. It seems the TGA has its head in the sand. It was their strict policy that caused the black market in the first place. Australia looks to be very supportive of maintaining tax revenue from combustible tobacco to the detriment of millions of people who vape in the lucky country. And they have the gall to call this public health. Lastly, thank you again for joining us. Please keep an eye out on social media for more information on the Scope live streams that will run on World Vape Day and World No Tobacco Day on 30 and 31 May. Stay safe and be well.